Welcome to the Crystal Coach Show with me, your host, Anahata, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom. Are you feeling overwhelmed, anxious, maybe disconnected? Do you ever feel like you don't know how to live a life of peace and joy? I am Anahata Roach, the Crystal Coach, and during this show, we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. The Crystal Coach Show leaves you with a feeling of connection and the clarity it takes towards becoming the best version of yourself as you hear from thought leaders and many others to help you ignite the crystalline nature of who you really are. Stay tuned. The Crystal Coach Show starts now. Hello there, and welcome to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm your host, Anahata Roach. I'm sorry for the delay. We had some technical difficulties logging on, and it's very fitting that today's episode topic is coping with chaos. Yay! I personally have been being tested and, you know, it's like, are you practicing what you preach? Are you practicing what you preach? Yeah, right? It's a, it's um a real wake up call when spirit kind of does that to you, but I'm, I'm getting the message. I'm getting the message. I promised you, you know, um, I'm, I'm really glad that this opportunity has come up for, uh, for me to share experiences that I'm having some experiences that some of my clients have had and, just kind of like, let's just put this all on the table. I'm not here to talk about um, all the, uh, you know, politically what's going on in the world, but we could all agree that there's chaos in the world today. And I know that there's many of us that are feeling anxious and overwhelmed. I mean, it's just crazy, all the violence and, and just discord and disharmony and negativity that's going on in the world today right you know and sometimes you just feel like there's nothing you can do to change what's going on around you hmm. do you feel like the unexpected disruptions in your plans and routines are like causing chaos in your otherwise organized organized and regular life <laughs> guess what you're not alone you're not alone so um Today, I'm going to talk about, uh, I'm going to really just kind of take a deep dive into how we can expand our awareness of events and situations, but not be so emotionally triggered by them. Uh, gosh, I'm, I'm just going to start telling stories and giving you examples. Um, and then I, I'll give you a, like some, I can do this now kind of hacks for coping with feelings of helplessness or vulnerability or paralyzed will or just general anxiousness. And as usual, I'll offer recommendations for stones and crystals that could support you in your work for the in these types of situations. Okay, well, what happens when the news goes from bad to worse? Geez, unless you've been totally cut off from social media or other news media outlets, I'm sure you're painfully aware, as am I, of the horrors that are happening to innocent people all over the globe. You know, there's typically two types of reactions to uh, this kind of information overload. Uh, Full-on anxiety, uh, avoidance, so, you know, the, 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 it, the anxiety causes you to have this grief or rage. And then the other end of that spectrum is like the, the ostrich. You just want to stick your head in the sand. No, 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 no. I don't know anything. So let's talk about that. In order to talk about the relevant things going on in 2023, back up to 2001. Where were you on the morning of September 1st, or September 11th, excuse me, 2001? Maybe you weren't born yet. That's okay. But those of us who were adults then watched in horror as the news showed commercial airplanes slamming into the Twin Towers of New York City. 
The footage was shown over and over and over again. When the towers fell, I remember that there was a clip of these people running down a street and this huge rolling cloud of debris from the explosion, from the, the collapse of the towers were just like chasing these people. It looked like a, an old time 40s horror movie. It was it was so surreal. It it was it was really hard to take in and compromise. I mean, not compromise, sorry. Take, I'm sorry, another word. Take in and process. It was really hard to take in and process. Is this really happening? Is this something that, you know, it's like the war of the worlds. Is this really just a, a pretend kind of chaos and uh, tragedy? No, no, it wasn't a terrible movie, unfortunately. I was... My in answer to your the question I just posed, where were you? I was in Chicago at the time. Um, I had flown in the day before, and uh, I was attending a communication management workshop. There were a lot of people that day. Um, well, we were going from the hotel to the site of the workshop, and we were being shuttled by a van that had a TV screen in in the back where the passengers were and we were literally watching the the second plane slam into the towers as we were going to this workshop it was um it was so so bizarre the people at this workshop were people who managed and directed internal communications for corporations and organizations all across the country we got there to the workshop and you know the, the first thing that some people did because they had branches or offices in the twin tower their organizations had offices in the twin towers first thing that these people did was go off and get on the telephone and try to figure out you know who was there who was not there what happened and do some strategy around how are we going to cope with this chaos? How are we going to inform our employees nationwide, globally, what has just happened? So this workshop turned out to be a crisis management communication workshop and not necessarily just managing communication for results and value. And unfortunately for me in St. Louis, the company I, I was associated with did not have any business or um, facilities or branches in New York City, let alone the, the Twin Towers. But so I didn't have that same for my other um, workshop colleagues. But I was able to like observe what they were going through and obviously felt that there were some things that probably needed to be developed in terms of strategy around communication for my own organization. The, the workshop leaders tried to provide content that they had already prepared, uh, but it was it was like, it was, it was not, we were not able to absorb what was being said because there were so many of us who were, you know, not even in the room. They had to excuse themselves and go and have other conversations. It, it was it was really crazy. The reason I'm telling you this is because that moment, that day, that that initial like a shot of adrenaline about what's going on kind of morphed into, you know, action. But the planes, nobody could get home. There were no planes. Everything was shut down. The way I got home was I hitched a ride with a, a woman from Memphis who, who lived in Memphis that was going through St. Louis. And she actually had been able to manage to get like one of the last rental cars that were available you know, at the O'Hare airport. Driving to O'Hare was kind of weird, but that's another story. I mean, you know, when you're used to having this, this, the chaos in the sky, you know, the organized chaos in the sky, there was nothing, there was no sound. It was, it was very weird. The reason I'm bringing this up is because that 
9-11 experience was very much akin to what happened when terrorists struck in Israel and there was an invasion in Ukraine. It's It was like, this isn't real. This can't be real. And yet it is real. And coping with that and the, the chaos that had mm, happened as a result, that is what I really want to talk about today. We have a couple of ways that we can, you know, we're triggered. We can really get angry. We can, we can be like the trap to the fly, you know, <laughs> just take that bait, take that bait and do exactly and be really almost manipulated by another person's strategy, like, like the terrorist strategy, strategy. What it was the strategy there. The strategy was to get a war going you know, was to get reaction, was to foment uh, disruption in uh, peace talks and all of this other stuff. You know, The bad guys don't want peace. The bad guys don't want love. They want fear and they want hatred. So you can, you can do that. You can get angry. You can certainly, those of us that are sensitive, feel this grief, feel this sense of helplessness because we're unable physically, or we think we're unable to physically do anything to make it better. Right? It's it's a it's a horrible, helpless feeling. The other the other aspect is is when you just you know, you you can either get addicted to the cable news, which is on 24-7, and stuff that they say is breaking news. They've said that same thing is breaking news for the last four cycles. It's just a way to get you to stay connected to the fear, to the anger, to the hatred. Sure, there are some other... Uh, channels that want that give you some different perspective than that but on on the the talking heads channels you know the the big ones believe me i know people who are addicted to just being there right in front of it they want every single thing what does that do to you that increases your heart rate that you know stresses you out that just gives you the sense of complete outrage you're you're not stepping back. You're not taking a breath. You're not looking at what's, you know, what's real. So this is what I wanted to come on and talk to you guys about, because here's the lesson that I've learning. I am learning the more I can let go of my emotional trigger or that my, um, my egoic response to what's going on, the easier it is for me to flow with whatever's happening, you know, and to allow myself to just be connected to all there is. And I ask for help today in getting this message of love across because we are hearing fear and hatred and violence. We're seeing violence. We're seeing grief. We're seeing tragedy and horror all the time we're not the reason that it's more impactful on everyone this time rather than when it was back before the internet is that we're globally we're all instantly connected we're not we're seeing things as they unfold not two weeks later it's i i'm I'm old enough that I remember the news clips as a child, a real small child. I remember the news clips of the Vietnam War. That wasn't in real time, but it was still disturbing. The thing that I have learned and I'd like to share with you all is that if you're not immediately impacted by 
something that's going on. There are things that you can do to make yourself useful and, and to try to make a difference. You can donate to, uh, you know, the, the aid organizations like Doctors Without Borders or the International Red Cross, or you can just, you can pray, you can, whatever your uh, religious affiliation, whatever your spirituality is, you can set an intention, you can open up and, and hold space for peace, for resolution, for, because I'm, I'm fully convinced that love always wins. Love always wins. Okay, Anahata, sure, yeah. Uh-huh, show me another one. Tell me another joke, I'll laugh. It may not be in our lifetime, guys, but love always wins. And it, if you hold on to that feeling of connection with the love that you are, and not allow yourself to be disconnected through your thoughts, but connected in your heart. Huh? There's the difference. There's the difference. <sighs> you know, I had I had an outline to um, to use today. I'm not doing it. I really just want to sit with you all and and offer some things that we can do. I've already offered a couple. I mean, you know, that's the easy part. You can make a donation. Yeah, you felt better, okay? Make a donation. That's great. But what about you? How can you take care of you? You know, we are, a, what was the saying, a thousand points of light? Each one of us is a light. Each one of us holds the light of love and source in us. And how can we make our light brighter so that the more light that is bright, it lifts us out of this darkness? Those that want us to live in fear and hatred don't want our lights to be bright. They want the darkness. You see? See the difference? And in my work, I have had um, opportunities to see amazing results with people who have allowed that light to shine within them. I've seen it all, man. I've, I've just, you know, I've seen women who have had, they, they are so anxious. They're so fearful. They're afraid to be alone. They're afraid to walk from the car to the door. They're afraid because of they've been traumatized and they've been programmed to be afraid, to feel vulnerable, to feel like they're going to be a victim at any moment. That's, that's a mental mind control kind of thing. You doing that to yourself, although you've, you know, I'm, I'm really good at clearing out emotional programming that somebody else put in you. But, you know, when you're holding on to a program that you've decided is, is the real thing, that's harder to separate from, right? But working with grounding, getting back in your body, because we, we, get, we get up this way and we're just like, like a chicken with their head cut off. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Goodness gracious. If you are in your body... You are present. You feeling, you know, I've got three things. It's called stop, drop, and roll. Stop. Stop looking at the daggum CNN or NBC or Fox News or whatever that you're looking at, okay? You just take a break from it. Unplug for a minute. You don't need to be complete. I'm constantly bombarded by all of this breathless stuff, okay? Stop, take a deep breath. 
drop, drop in, drop into the body. So you stop, you disconnect from that which is causing your thoughts to be in turmoil. Drop into your body. Feel the heart, feel the heart beating. Feel the lungs coming with air and releasing that air. Feel your feet on the floor. You're behind in the seat. Feel the weight of your body where you are. Just be in your body and allow that to be more important than what you just shut your mind off of. Dropping into your body, breathing, just taking breaths, mindful breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth. Even if you do it one time, it's a form of meditation. The way you can get grounded, the way you can disconnect from the, all of those crazy thoughts is just to get back into your body and breathe. And then roll, stop, drop, and roll. The rolling part is, is like rolling with it, getting more uh, adept at, you know, deflecting the lasers that are thrown at you, practicing redirections, rephrasing, reframing the things that are, the thoughts that are coming into your mind in a way that, you know, it's not about you anymore. It's about your connection. You, the ego person, the ego self, the self that has judgment, that has um, the shoulds, right? I talked about the shoulds last episode. The the, the shoulda, woulda, couldas even, right? The, the type of thoughts that keep us locked into uh, a certain feeling or emotional response. The more we can learn to disengage, to step back, to become the observer and say, hmm, especially when it happens to you, right? This is what I've been doing. That's interesting. I couldn't get on Zoom this morning when I was supposed to, you know, noon, straight up noon. I'm, I'm on my podcast. Not today. Zoom wasn't working for me. So. Well, that's interesting. Instead of getting really, really uptight, stressed out and upset, I'm learning to stay calm. I'm learning to deflect. I'm learning to reframe. Okay, we'll just go with whatever. I'm, we're just rolling with this, right? The outline doesn't fit. We're rolling with this. Do you see what I'm saying? Especially... If you're still in corporate and you're working in corporate, there's stuff that happens all the time that are is was something that was not planned, right? And you can have your schedule, you know, locked and loaded, and something like a terrorist attack can completely unplug you from where you were. Now that's an extreme example, but something else can happen, you know, like a facility could go on strike or um something could you know, some big news, some new announcement, something can be disruptive in your routine and in your workday and in your thoughts. And you can either get stressed out about it because this was supposed to happen today, or you can say, that's interesting. Let's see how we can work with that. It's been very, very helpful for me. It's been transformative for others that have worked with me. But it's really funny that the universe is now teaching me. You know, it's like, yeah, right? You've been teaching others. Let's let's see how well you do this, right? So the teacher's getting taught. And it's kind of fun. And I and I do literally have to sit sit back and go, hmm, that's interesting. Because the more I do that the more connected I feel and the more I'm able to show up in service. 
chaos is an opportunity for growth. So coping with chaos is you can either let it, let it run over you or you can pull back from it. You can either embrace it or you can try to resist it, which is futile. It's like the Borg. That's a cultural reference from a long time ago, Star Trek. The Borg said, resistance is futile. You will be assimilated. So if you don't want to be assimilated, try to practice stepping back from what's going on and see it as an opportunity for growth. I mean, whether it's it's the world, the global chaos or the chaos in your office or the chaos within yourself. You have opportunities to view this as a moment of growth because chaos is what creates and we can create a new world together or we can create one that's a complete hmm, uh, George Orwell, Orwellian type of society. I mean, we have a choice. We're here in this free will. We have a choice. Yeah. We have a choice to choose if we want to stay in fear and hatred. Or we can choose to create a new type of peaceful, loving world. And each one of us can have a part in that if we work on ourselves. This is my point. It doesn't have to be outside of us. We don't have to take action outside of us to make an impact. I know that sounds really bizarre, but believe me, I've seen it in so many different circumstances. When we, when we heal ourselves, we're literally healing seven generations before us and seven generations after us. What a beautiful incentive to work on yourself, right? The more we can grow, the more we can heal and uncouple from old negative triggering programs, emotional responses, the easier it gets to shine your light, to heal yourself, to be the person you came here to be instead of someone who is constantly afraid, unable to do the things that they that you know you need to do, but you just can't, you don't have the energy to do it, or you're just too overwhelmed by all the awfulness of the world to put one foot in front of the other, to get up, to go to work, to, to do the daily tasks you need to do. You know, it doesn't need to be that way. When we come back, I'm going to give you some uh, new stones. Yeah, I've got some new stones that I'm going to talk about that could support us in working around healing that these anxiousness, this hatred, this negativity, this being more in this inner place of inner peace and emotional healing. And yeah, when we come back, I'll give you some, some tools to work with and I'll recap the takeaways from the episode. Okay. So hang on. Be, be, we'll be right back. Okay. Hi there. Welcome back to the Crystal Coach Show. I'm Anna Hata Roach, your host. And we've been talking about coping with chaos. And the takeaway I want you to have today is that Chaos can be limiting or it can be expansive. 
it can make you feel small if you allow it, or it can help you to grow, to expand, to be more than you are now. Because how we respond to chaos sets the tone and the energy for the reality we want to create. And if you remember three things, stop, drop, and roll, disengage from whatever's making you really crazy or the, you know, making the thoughts just go round and round and round, disengage from that. Drop into your body, breathe, just breathe. Sometimes without even a thought, just focus on breathing, maybe listening to your heartbeat. Find a way to, you know, as you breathe, you're breathing in peace. You're allowing your heart rate to calm, the blood pressure to go down, to be in a place of silence, neutrality, and then roll. Instead of resisting that chaos that's coming at you find opportunities to get curious to see ways how i can grow from this what do i need to learn from this what you know if i can't go through maybe uh, there's ways around yeah you know the whole brick wall theory you can't go through it maybe you can go around it or over it or under it find another way don't be so stuck in resistance to what's come up for you so that you can be more flexible. You can roll, roll with it. You know, do the Wonder Woman bracelet banishing laser stuff. It's really, it just boils down to that. You can allow it to control you or not. Then, um, yeah, I, I just have some recommendations for a few crystals that and stones that maybe you I haven't talked to you about before um I mean all, always the the go-to ones for me rose quartz black tourmaline hematite those can always help you um aquamarine to release those thoughts of negativity but this one these I think are are have a nuance that and they're not something you can just go to the crystal store and you know buy usually the brick and mortar places don't have these stones you would have to either go online to find it or you would go you would like check out a uh, gem and mineral society in your area and find out when their shows are their gem and mineral shows are because that's when all of these different types of minerals and stones can be found i've Actually, the, some of the ones that I'm showing you today, uh, I bought at gem and mineral shows. Um, I mean, I know people that buy stones and crystals on eBay, but, um, you know, there's also online shops that might have uh, these more rare stones, but that's for you. Okay. So I'm just going to give you the resource and then you can figure it out for yourself. Um, the first one I want to talk about, I use this a lot in my work. Um, it's a really an emotional healing stone and usually shows up on the heart chakra. Um, it's, it's called Verisite and it's really, a a lovely little light green stone. Um, this is a, a raw piece. It's just a raw stone. It's not polished. It hasn't been cut into usually it has some banding inside of it. Um, you can see that there's a little bit of banding here. It's a stripe on this. If you're watching the video, um, if not, just look it up. It, it, I'll spell it for you. V-A-R-I-S-C-I-T-E, Verisite. The, the reason I like this is because it helps release judgmental thoughts, words, and attitudes. Did you hear me? It helps release judgmental thoughts, words, and attitudes. 
it gives, you know, a, a really, this is like a unity of hearts. It's this, this vibration is of inner peace and emotional healing. It's a, it's a beautiful, lovely heart stone, heart centered stone. And it's at the top of my list for coping with chaos. The next one is called Vivianite. Vivianite. I don't know if you would be able to see, probably not. This actually is quite green. It's a most beautiful green. Um, I'm going to see if I can turn on my, uh, there we go. Maybe you can see it now. I don't know. Hopefully you did. Anyway, it's a beautiful, beautiful green, but it's a very fragile stone. It's it's kind of layered like mica is layered, but, um, and, and it's, uh, as I say, it's rare, but the, the energy of Vivianite is just so beautiful. And it really helps us to release worries and it creates feelings of, deep peace and emotional connectedness and centeredness. So if you're emotionally centered, you're not all over the place, right? You're not up, you're not down, you're just in the middle, you're centered. So this, you know, coping with chaos, you kind of need to bring all of your emotions kind of into the center and say, okay, babe, we got this, we got this. Vivianite is really wonderful for that purpose to help you get into that frequency of, hey, we got this, it's okay. The next one I wanna show you is called Sarocyte. Oh, I didn't spell Vivianite for you, sorry. V-I-V-I-A-N, like Vivian, and then I-T-E, Vivianite. Right. So the next one is called Sarocyte, Sarocyte. C-E-R-R-U-S-I-T-E. This is actually a very heavy and dense stone, mineral. It is orthorhombic in, in its molecular shape. And it is the result of a, a fusion of lead and carbon with um, oxygen. Wow. So you've got the two most dense kind of elements fusing with the light of spirit oxygen the life we breathe oxygen it's our life right the life-giving breath this is it's so interesting to me because i it it comes up rarely but actually it's been coming up more and more with my client work so um i'm paying more attention to it and i'm recommending this as a way to support your manifestation of spirit, of light into like the densest aspects of your being. So the, you know, fear and hatred create this really dense energy in the body. And serocyte is really like the light that disperses that density. Um, it inspires hope. It assists us in overcoming feelings of overwhelm, especially when, you know, trying to organize your thoughts. So I would re highly recommend, I mean, again, the Sarasite is not something you're going to find at your local gem and mineral store, unless it's a highly specialized uh, place. If it's just got, you know, the, the regular rocks, um, Sarasite something you're going to have to research and find. But as I say, it's a very heavy stone. Um, so Vivianite is very light as a, uh, that's just a opposite of that. Uh, speaking of heavy stones, we'll go to the next one, which is called tiger iron, tiger iron. It is a combination of tiger eye, red jasper and hematite. This is a very, very interesting stone. And it's, it is so good for grounding. Oh, 
I'm back in my body now. I'm not up there playing with the star babies or I'm not resonating with microwaves and cell phone towers and computers. I'm in my body. Wow. Tiger eye is, um, it, it mm, provides emotional strength and stamina. It's really self-healing. I mean, you know, the hematite is the be here now stone, right? And the tiger eye is about balance. And then the jasper is protection. And you get all three of them in this piece of tiger iron. It's called tiger iron because of the tiger eye and then the iron content in the hematite. And it too is a very heavy stone. But um, you might be able to find tiger eye in your local gem and mineral store. Um because it's, it's more common than the other three I've just named. So as I say, tiger, iron, it's pretty easy. It is as it sounds. So those are the four ones that I, I, I just decided that when coping with chaos, we needed some specialty stones. We can always use the, the, the self-love, the self, the, the forgiveness of diopteis, you, you could, the, the, you know, transmutation of negativity to clear light with a black tourmaline, the release of, of toxic thoughts and, and feelings through aquamarine, but varicite, vivianite, serocyte, and tiger iron really focus on the kinds of feelings and the kinds of things that we need when we are coping with chaos. So... I hope you can find those because when I say you can use them, I'm saying you can connect with them. You sit with them in meditation or just as you're doing your stop, drop and roll, get one of them, start breathing with it, put it in your receiving hand. Ask for the help. Just ask for help. Remember, our angels and guides and all of the beings of light that want that love us and want only the best for us can only hold space for us and send us love unless we ask for help. So if you're ready and willing to allow for assistance, then ask it of the stone and start to get a shift in your perspective. Thank you for being with me today and for hanging in there when I was late. I appreciate that. Um, I do have, I've, I've revamped my, I had done a 2020 crisis, you know, crystals in a crisis ebook that I have on my, on my website that you can go and download, uh, just go onto my website at HTTPS, the crystal coach.com and right on the home page, it's crystals in a crisis and you can download it. It's, a uh, an exploration of, of how crystals and, and stones work and why, and also some recommendations of other stones for other things to uh, other emotions that you might be coping with. So this was about chaos. That's about crisis. It's the same kind of thing. So if you find yourself kind of in a, in a place that you just, I can't be here anymore. I, I have to shift out of this please go to my website, thecrystalcoach.com and look on the homepage for Crystals in a Crisis. It's been updated for 2023. Thank you, thank you as always and blessings for you. You have been listening to The Crystal Coach Show, helping you live every day with clarity, guidance, and practical wisdom with me, your host, Anahata. Tune in every first and third Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific Time on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we channel divine wisdom through stories of service, spirituality, and stones for self-care. Feel connected and reside in the vibration of love on The Crystal Coach Show. For more information and to become the best version of yourself, visit TheCrystalCoach.com. That's TheCrystalCoach.com. See you next time.